Well, I think it's about time I posted what I did on February 1st. I dug up the book page that I buried on January 1st, and here it is. And then I wrapped a, a second page around it for my February contribution, and this is the page that I buried. It represents the weaving traditions from both my homeland of Sri Lanka and the current place where I live now on the west coast of Canada. I used a miniature version of a traditional Coast Salish loom. And one of the interesting things to me about this loom is the way that you set it up. So instead of just having the weaving on a flat surface, it actually wraps right around the loom using a little stick at the back. And then when you pull your weaving off the loom, there are no, there are no loose edges. Everything is, you end up with these loops at the top and the bottom. And I'll tell you about this, the connection to my homeland of Sri Lanka while, while you watch me fumble around and try to weave on this little miniature loom. I I'm using some wool yarn that I spun and a little bone needle to do my weaving and the warp, the threads that are on the loom, it's hand spun silk. No reason, I just happened to have some here and I thought they fit the scale of this little miniature weaving. And I have to tell you, <laughs> This loom is really too small to weave on. It was really fiddly to use, but but it was the size that I wanted for my project. So now let me tell you the, the connection between weaving and Sri Lanka. This is another tale from the Mahavamsa or the Great Chronicle of Sri Lanka. In the year 288 BCE, so that would be about 2300 years ago, a princess from India named Sangamita brought a cutting from the Sri Maha Bodhi tree to Sri Lanka. The cutting is known as the Jaha Sri Maha Bodhi. It was planted in Sri Lanka and it's still alive there today, making it the oldest tree in the world with a known planting date and recorded history. This tree has great significance to Buddhists all over the world because the original Sri Maha Bodhi it was the very tree that the Lord Buddha was sitting under when he attained enlightenment, but perhaps a better English language translation might be awakening. That original tree is no longer alive. The offspring of the Jaha Sri Maha Bodhi are now grow all over Sri Lanka where they are known as bow trees. Oftentimes a temple is planted where a bow tree starts to grow. So on my little woven sample that I buried at the beginning of February, I placed a single leaf from a bow tree that was picked up off the ground near a temple in Sri Lanka. What does this have to do with weaving, you ask? When Sangamita was bringing the tree to Sri Lanka, she had many helpers who came along with her in her on her trip to Sri Lanka. And amongst those people were weavers and potters. And now, just like the story of Kuveni that I told about last month, that I talked about last month, that's pretty much all there is. And that one little statement in in the Mahavamsa is used as evidence that there was an ancient weaving tradition in Sri Lanka. We don't know anything about the weaving tradition. We don't know if they were weaving cloth, were they weaving baskets? What happened to Sangamita after she came to Sri Lanka? Well, they didn't record that. And that seems to be a bit of a, a trend when I look at the stories of the women in the Mahavamsa, in the story of, in the Mahavamsa covers a few thousand years of history and there are two, two minor mentions of textile arts in the whole book. Very little about the women, so that's, we don't really know. I, I haven't been able to find much more information about Sangamita other than she brought the tree to Sri Lanka. Anyway, I think that's about it for that part. Now, warping the loom. I've been asked by a few people to show them how to warp this style of loom. And I thought I would include that in this video. Let's see if I can give some verbal instructions for this that make some sense.
loop. So you make a loop and you tie that onto the stick that's going to be at the back of your loom. And then you start winding your warp around in that now. Now normally when you have one of these types of looms, they're bigger than this and they stand up straight. And you would tie that bar to the back of the loom just loosely. And because my, my loom is so little, I'm just going to hold it in place with my hand. But the warping will be the same procedure. The way that the warping goes is I loop, I loop the, th the warp thread over the bar and then I wrap it around to the front of the loom. So at the front of the loom, the threads are just going straight up and down. And all of the action happens here at the back where the bar is. So every time I come to the back, I loop the warp thread around that bar and then back around to the front and then straight up and down the front. And then I loop it around to the back again, around the bar and then back to the front, straight up and down in the front. Even a, on a larger loom, it's helpful if your warp is wound into a ball that's going to fit through all the spaces. So in the front of your loom, you should always be going straight up and down. You can adjust the warp threads to move them over to one side if you like. And there's no real way to kind of set a specific spacing of your thread. You just have to do that by hand, by eye. And you'll know that you're getting this right if on the front you can stick your hand through and there's no, nothing crossing between the back and the front. The back looks complicated and this front looks fairly straightforward. So just whenever you need to just adjust the threads to give yourself some more space and then go back to wrapping around the bar at the back, straight up and down the front. Around the bar at the back and straight up and down the front. And you just keep going until you get to the end or you've got as many threads as you want. You do want to check that your warp threads have a nice even tension on them before you tie before you tie your 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 the end of your warp onto that bar at the back. You want to make sure that you've got a nice even tension on the threads. And then when you get to the end, you just cut off your warp thread and tie it on to the back of the loom with a little loop. And you're ready to start weaving. Well, it turns out that searching for weaving in Sri Lanka is far more fruitful than looking up spinning in Ceylon. And now the last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to tell you another little weaving story. And this is a personal connection of finding my own grandparents that has a weaving connection. So this starts with a well-known Sri Lankan weaving designer named Barbara Sansoni. And when I looked up Barbara Sansoni and I was reading her biography, I noticed that she got her start creating designs for a weaving program run by the Sisters of the Good Shepherd. And the name of that group reminded me of my, the name of my mom's school in Sri Lanka in Colombo, Good Shepherd Convent. So I looked up the school to see if there was a connection between the two places. It looks like there isn't, but while I was looking at the Good Shepherd Convent website, I noticed their Montessori program. Now this was the first Montessori program that was set up in Sri Lanka, and it was actually started by Maria Montessori herself when she came to Sri Lanka after World War II and started a teacher training program there. And I remember that my dad's cousin Mavis had been a teacher there and might have even actually been trained by Maria Montessori. So I looked her up to see if I could find any more about dad's cousin Mavis. And I didn't find anything about her, but while I was looking her up, I came across 
the Bobby Anolda Travel Agency. Now, Bobby Anolda was Mavis's uncle. He was also my dad's uncle. And on his website, there were loads of photos of vintage cars, including this one that was actually taken in front of my mum's old school. And if you look in the far left corner of the picture, you can just see part of my dad's parents' house. And I was curious to know if there was any more about Bobby Arnolda on, on the internet. So that led me to a photography website with a archive of old photos from Sri Lanka, including this one. And these are Bobby Arnolda's parents. So they were also my grandmother's parents and that makes them my great grandparents. I would never seen a picture photo of them before. And I just can't help looking at them and wondering, were they really wearing those clothes in Sri Lanka? And I was curious to find out who the photographers who had put this collection together were. And I was really surprised to find out that one of them is named Dominic Sansoni. And he, in fact, is the son of Barbara Sansoni, the weaving designer that started out this whole thread of inquiry. So... There's all kinds of weaving connections there. Anyway, I'm really enjoying the coming up with these buried book pages and I'm hope, planning to continue on for the rest of this year, finding connections between my homeland of Sri Lanka and my current place here in Canada. And I'm also really finding all kinds of fascinating things as part of my ancestral cloth research that I'm hoping to share with you as the year goes by as well. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back for another video soon.